What can I say? I'm Nina motherfucking Blanco. Hello! Welcome to season three. Oh my goodness, how exciting is this? I am excited to be back in my own little home studio, hanging out with you, being able to talk to you. I am kind of hyped up right now because I'm excited to record the first episode of season three. Also, I drank a whole bunch of coffee. Also, I took today off of work to do this. So hola, bitches. Hope you are ready. Let's get into it. Let's play the Breakfast Burrito Friday song. You know what it is. listening breakfast burrito friday happy breakfast burrito friday we are going to be celebrating breakfast burrito friday all season long i see no point in dropping it you know i was a little conflicted there for a while like do i keep it going are people annoyed by this i'm kind of annoyed by this other people must be type of deal but um i found that more people like it than don't so we're gonna keep it around and regarding that song um my niece actually my niece reina which hi boo boo you better be listening you stupid bitch just kidding I love you um so she told me the breakfast burrito Friday song is just a little bit too long she says there's a point in there where I could have cut it off and I didn't and I told her to listen to it and like okay give me the actual feedback what part of it and she never responded so that's on her we're keeping the original song for now until she comes back to me and tells me what part maybe to cut off if it needs to be shorter or maybe it doesn't need to be shorter maybe that's just her if if you feel a different way I want to hear from you I got to thank you so much for, um, you know, just kind of following along with me, not only listening to the podcast, because yes, that means a lot to me. This is my own little project that I'm doing. And um, it does mean a lot that people actually listen. People have asked about the podcast. When is it coming back? I need new episodes. I miss you. All of that means so fucking much to me and yes we are swearing a lot on this upcoming season because that's what we do it's a podcast this is my own thing there are no rules which I love that part about it so we're gonna have fun with it if you're watching on YouTube it is available on YouTube but you see that I'm holding Miko I've got Miko here with me I've got my Selena Barbie doll that I opened out of the packaging she's up on a Barbie stand finally and a whole new studio setup I really redid everything in this room, this extra like office room that we have and redid everything. I took up the entire room. I told the boy, I'm like, listen, when you were working from home because of the pandemic, everything like that, I get it. You needed your desk space. I wasn't doing the podcast even yet. But now that I am doing the podcast and you are not working from home, sorry, not fucking sorry, but I'm taking up this room. I love you. I'm taking this room. And he was like, "Okay, no problem. He does still have a desk. I did give him some workspace, but like he doesn't use it often. So I'm like, this is this is mine. I'm claiming this room. I'm sorry. This is mine. (laughs) So I'm lucky he let me to uh, let me do that. Also want to thank you. um, Those of you who saw my posts on social media about the stickers. Yeah, I got some Nina Blanco stickers, which is just very exciting. And so thank you so much for reaching out. I was giving them out for free. I was mailing them. I think I'm going to, I mean, I have no merch. There is no merch store. And people have asked like, when are you going to do merch? I would love to do something like that. I've tried to look into it a little bit and I'm just like not there yet. There's just like too much a part of it and too many different websites and stuff like that. And I just don't 100% understand it. Sometimes then it comes off a little 
too expensive. And I know in the beginning, like I'm not trying to make money off of this, right? <laughs> like not yet anyway. If I can monetize this one day, absolutely I am there. I'm just not there yet. Um, but people have been like wanting merch and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm thinking I'll start with these stickers. I gave them out for free um, for now. And as of now, you know, when I do the next round of giveaways, I'll announce it and I'll mail you some stickers and then maybe I'll come out with some other stuff. Yeah, my mind has been going on that. So I'm thinking about it. Uh, Thank you to the several people in so many different states that I sent these stickers to. Colorado, Missouri, Illinois, Washington, California, Texas, and New York. So uh, I sent those all out and I've gotten some people to even like post when they've received them on social media. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Like I need that. We need that support for this podcast to do anything. I mean, someone asked me because I've been trying to make we'll get into this in a little bit, but I've been trying to make some new friends. And someone asked me like, oh, you have a podcast. That's so cool. I love that. What is your podcast about? And I've talked about this in previous podcast episodes before. And I'm like, even still like, I don't know. It's like a diary for me. This is a diary for me. This is an outlet. This is a release. And if I can provide some sort of entertainment on top of that, I'm cool with it. So that's just pretty much what this is for me. It's just um, somewhere to put my thoughts, somewhere to crack a joke every once in a while and somewhere where I can swear on air, a type of on air, because obviously this isn't radio or anything, but um, putting my podcast out there, it's kind of exhilarating. It's kind of fun. It is available on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. I decided I'm going to stop being petty and I put it up on iHeartRadio app. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I didn't get it up on the iHeartRadio app because I was still a little bit salty, but I'm so over it. I'm so over that. And I mean, that's the thing, too, for any radio personalities that might be listening. I mean, you know this probably. And if you haven't learned this lesson, you'll learn this lesson is like, don't burn your bridges. And this kind of shit, it happens when you're let go from a company, especially like iHeart and kind of like Odyssey, like sorry to throw those names out there, but that's what it is. Right. And I've been telling everyone when people I've been meeting a lot of new people and like, oh, what do you do? You talk about my radio history a little bit. And yeah, I worked for iHeart and then I was unemployed for a while and they're like oh I'm so sorry and I'm like well you know I'm over it I'm like it unfortunately happens and I heart gonna I heart that's what I've been saying is I heart gonna I heart and that's what's gonna happen it's so unfortunate that that is the norm for that company but that's what it is and never say never like I'm not gonna turn down any future opportunities who knows what the future holds for me I'm just not gonna give up on my dreams, my aspirations, what I want for my career and my future self. So that being said, um, yeah, I'm just excited to be back on this podcast and whatever happens, happens. But thank you so much for supporting, listening, following, um, taking the time out of your day for this. It really does mean a lot. Uh, What have I been up to? I've been up to, I don't know, just a lot of work. Um, I started this new job in January. That's going pretty well. Uh, Ups and downs for sure. But I've decided that I'm going to keep things separate. We're keeping this separate. Um, Part of that is my decision. Part of that is not my decision, but that's stuff that I'm not going to get into. So um, my podcast is my podcast, but uh, I am working at a radio station. I do have some on air time. I am doing some things behind the scenes. It's going really well. I do get a lot of like praise and recognition because I work my ass off and I'm kicking ass at work, quite frankly, because I am smart and organized and pretty and I fucking step up. So work has been going great. Outside of that personal life stuff, um, the boy and I, we're doing really well. We're doing really well together. He is feeling more himself. We talked in season two about huge gigantic life changes in him losing his brother and it was very sudden and it was very sad and that is not something that you just get over one day you know he's still working on it every single day as am I both together and separately it's a lot that's just not something that you snap out of that's going to be a lifelong thing that we deal with and there's going to be highs and lows and he definitely especially in the beginning understandably so went through some lows and he wasn't quite himself and he knows that and I know that and we've talked about it we've worked together on it and um, he's done 
some grieving. He's taken a little bit of time for that. Not enough, in my opinion, but he has most certainly done some grieving and worked on a couple of things and he is feeling more himself. And um, I've been getting him out of the house, which has been good. We've been going to a lot of concerts lately, which has been a perk from work, which has been really awesome. Um, So the boy is doing great. He really is. And he's also kicking ass at work. We just like, we feel like Mr. and Mrs. just, we're doing great. We're doing really well in in all things, you know, in, in work, in personal life and just everything else. So we're doing all right. And on top of that, um, one of the things I can't remember if I talked about it. I mean, the last time I talked to you was in March, the end of March, I think, um, for the last episode of season two, when I talked about the belly button ring, (laughs) which that I still can't believe that happened. Um, but it did. And one thing that I've been wanting to work on this year for myself is working on friendships, working on personal friendships and working on female friendships. That's just something that I am missing a little bit. And it just has to do with like moving around and I've just done that enough in plenty of places and you make places you make friends in different places and then you move or they move and people are continuing on with their lives and some of these friendships you're able to maintain long distance but long distance anything is hard in relationships or friendships and uh, some of that just kind of fades away Um, and then wanting to have friends locally I think is important it's important for me like I need a lot of social interaction that's just who I am as a person and I am, ugh, I hate to say it, very much my mother. <laughs> and I need a lot of social interaction. I need face-to-face time with people. And... Um, I need friendships. So that's what I've been working on. So you guys, I'm dating, kind of. Um, I am dating women sort of on Bumble BFF. If you don't know Bumble BFF, I mean, you're living under a rock, uh, but I'm just looking for friends, right? And so Bumble, I know it's a dating app where the women, you find a dude that you might find attractive or whatever. And then the woman kind of makes the first step in starting up a chat and everything like that. And they have a friends version where if you match together, it's, it's like a fully different profile. And it's a profile to literally just make friends. It's not dating. It's separate from actual Bumble. It's Bumble BFF. And when you swipe on someone or whatever, you get matched, then you make the first move or they can make the first move. I guess on Bumble BFF, it's a little bit different. But either way, you can make the first move or start up a chat or whatever. And I've met up with a couple of these girls and um, it's it's been fun and it's so much like dating. And I'm definitely going to be doing an episode later this year on just Bumble BFF and my experience with that. Maybe I'll get a couple of the girls that I've met to come on this podcast. Some of them have said that they might be interested. So that could be a lot of fun. And with my new podcast setup here in this office, it makes it easier for me to like actually talk to people one on one if people do come through. So that's exciting as well. So we'll get to that later on this season. What else is to come this season? Um, I got to host Morning Show Boot Camp and go to Morning Show Boot Camp for the very first time. Morning Show Boot Camp, what is it? Again, we'll do a whole new episode on this, but let me just give you a little a little briefing, right? I'm not going to leave you hanging too much. So Morning Show Boot Camp, it is this nerdy little radio conference that has been around for forever, for like 30 years. And it has become bigger and bigger throughout the years. And now that it is 30 years later, it's gotten so huge and a lot of people interested in going and a lot of people interested in just making subtle changes to only make it better. And I have a friend who is helping with the production of Morning Show Boot Camp, and she asked me, hey, would you be interested in hosting Morning Show Boot Camp? They've never had a host before, but I feel it's needed to help the flow of things to help keep us on schedule because things typically go over time and it would be really helpful to have a pair of hosts and I would like for you to do it because she's seen me host some other things uh, before and I was like hell yeah so I got to host morning show boot camp and I got to be like one of the first hosts for this thing that has been going on for 30 years it's Um, It was a big deal for me. I mean, a lot of program directors from around the country are there. A lot of uh, on-air personalities from around the country are there. I mean, newbies and people who have been in the business forever. And it's such an amazing place to come 
together with people who understand, who understand this crazy radio thing that I am in, in this world. And it's different, man. It really is different. So it was kind of a relief to be around people who get it, who understand, who have been through the same things that I've been through. And we're just learning from each other. And I loved every fucking moment of it. It was just a big old radio love fest. That's what I loved about it is everyone was supportive of each other. You kind of put your ego aside. That's the whole thing. You put your ego aside. We're all here and we're all in this together. So I absolutely loved every minute of it and got super drunk plenty of times through that week. Yep. That's another huge part of it. Um, But We will talk about that on another episode this season. Another thing that happened this past summer, um, I was not on the best terms with Norma this summer. Yeah, my mom. She and I, we were butting heads a lot this summer. And she and I, the past couple of years, have been really close. I mean, I've always been pretty close with her my whole life. I'm definitely a mama's girl. I still am to this day. Don't get me wrong. And this past summer, and it really upset me that we weren't on the best of terms and we were kind of fighting and things were happening between us. Um, she ruined a very important trip that I was on this summer. She broke my heart on some family stuff. Like I cried. (laughs) I even took, I was being so dramatic. I mean, I can't help myself sometimes, but I even took like a little video. Um, I took a video of me crying because I was just so upset at what my mom did. And I was like, I guess we'll talk about it on the podcast. So I used to think I only have daddy issues, but I think I have all around fucking family issues. (sighs) <sighs> one of these days, whenever I relaunch the Nina Blanco podcast, we're going to have a lot to talk about. Can we? <laughs> and yeah, we weren't talking for a while. And I haven't done that very often with my mom where I'm not on speaking terms with her, but it definitely happened. I mean, I will say that we're OK now. Uh, if you follow me on social media, you've seen that like my mom a couple weeks ago surprised me. She came out to Denver. I had no idea. She planned it with the boy um, and they got her flown out here and she surprised me for a weekend and it was it was good to spend some time with her for sure and i think she's trying because it was not good this past summer so we'll do a whole episode on the norma drama and i haven't told her that i'm going to do that so she listens to these podcasts so it's coming norma it is coming you better watch your actions around me cuz i'll put you on blast anyway <laughs> I just wanted to do this first episode as kind of like an introduction of like what I'm doing, what's going on, um, what's to expect, what to expect this season, season three of the Nina Blanco podcast and above everything else to just thank you. Thank you for being here, for listening to me, for dealing with me, for for all of it, for like wanting episodes. That's so exciting. And so I've been trying to like listen to other podcast episodes and like what can I do? Because it really stuck with me a couple of weeks ago when someone's like, what's your podcast about? And I just didn't quite have the right answer. And I've been telling myself I need to come up with this answer since season fucking one. So Nina is about time to come up with that answer. And I think we're going to come up with that answer together in this season. And I'm going to do some experimental things as well. And sometimes these segments will come up one time. Sometimes these segments will be reoccurring. And I need your feedback. Need it, need it, need it. So this first segment that we're going to throw in, we're going to try it. Um, It's kind of like get into it. Yeah. Remember, I did that in the first season. It was just celebrity news at the end of an episode. But I felt like that celebrity news just got so old by the time I actually aired the episode. And people, when podcasts are released, you know, it might be a couple hours. It might be a couple days. It might be the next week that they listen to it. And if I'm doing celebrity news, it's just... Celebrity news just goes by so quick and so fast and they've already heard it. So I think I'm going to stay away from celebrity news unless it's something big. But we are going to start news with Nina and I'll probably come up with some lame ass jingle if this is successful. But one thing that I do want to talk about celebrity related is Britney Spears. Okay, the reason why is because she's coming out with her book, right? And so uh, the day that I'm recording this, 
there are so many TMZ snippets. They got their hands on the book. I need to read it. But um, one of the biggest things that was in there that has been the news of the day is that Britney Spears got pregnant by Justin Timberlake back in the day when they were dating in the 90s. They had heartfelt talks about it. Of course, there were tears involved and they've decided to abort the baby and they're not going to have a baby and so they never did but it is just being revealed for the first time that Britney Spears was indeed pregnant by Justin Timberlake which is just like oh my gosh but at the same time it's not that surprising you know what I mean like they dated for a long time and yeah they were like teenagers or young adults at the time and blah 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 but like that's life man that happens and when you're in love and you're in a relationship with someone and you're doing the dirty I mean stuff happens that happens for a lot of people and they get pregnant and it's unexpected and it's just like it shouldn't be a faux pas to even talk about it because it does happen and because people don't want to talk about it and put this weird label on it it's like such a shock oh my gosh I can't believe it and then on top of that you know the freedom for women to choose am I gonna have this baby am I not gonna have this baby now I haven't read Britney's book and I could be wrong on you know who knows it was even a decision she might have been forced to do it she could have been you know pregnant to do it maybe she did want to have the baby I didn't read this part of the book I just read the headlines that are coming out so um that definitely makes you wonder but at the same time like I said it's just important to talk about having the option having the option that you don't need to have a baby if you're pregnant. Now, I know that's controversial. I know not everyone believes that. And that's fine because that's your opinion. And this is just my opinion. This is called the Nina fucking Blanco podcast. OK, this is my opinion on on this ordeal. So, um, you know, unexpected preg- pregnancies don't treat it as such a like, oh, my God. And you're not even married. Oh, and when it comes to having a baby versus choosing not to have a baby. I mean, don't treat it like that either. Uh, That's what kind of puts people in weird situations. And that's what puts people in situations of, oh, I will have this baby, even though I'm not ready for it. And I don't really want to, but I feel pressured to have it because it's such a huge controversial thing. So I don't know, just putting that out there that it's okay. This is America, dude. Like, Having options is a good thing. Um, Having health care is a great thing. And uh, being able to make a decision for your fucking self is a fantastic thing. So hot topic. Sorry about that. And another news with Nina. Sorry. Like I said, if this thing sticks, I will come up with some lame sound whatever. Uh, But for now, you just have to deal with that. Anyway, news with Nina. (laughs) Trump, just put him in jail. GOP, just just fire everyone. Let's start over. Let's get the dinosaurs out of there. It is what it is. We're not going to get too deep into it because we're trying to keep things lighthearted, but I'm also trying to like cover a couple news headlines, okay? So we're going to keep it at that. The orange man needs to go to jail. If you still support him, I can't. I can't. I fucking can't. Um, You need to get your priorities straight. You need to rethink your whole life, and that's what it is. Okay, news with Nina. <laughs> I wanted to talk about this story with Suzanne Summers. Um, so she did pass away last weekend at the age of 76 years old from cancer. She'd been battling breast breast cancer on and on, on and off like a lot of her life. And most of her fans knew that. I mean, she was the bombshell blonde in Three's Company and people loved her as an actress. And she also has like her business and just everything on the side. She was 76 when she passed. But I feel like a story that people aren't putting out there or it's just kind of dying down because it's a celebrity and she's an older celebrity and some people just don't care to look into some of the details or read any more stories outside of her like death announcement which is kind of messed up but that's just the world we live in right but a story that I read the other day like had me clutching my heart and if I'm like if the boy doesn't love me this way then there's a fucking problem like (laughs) 
<laughs> so Suzanne Summers was married uh, to the love of her life. His name was Alan, and he, they were married for like 40 something years, together for 50 something years. Absolute love of their lives, right? And so she passed away, and her cancer was progressing. And if you've ever been around anyone with cancer, I mean, you can just tell when things are getting bad, things are getting bad, and you can just see their body their mind, everything just deteriorate. And so she got to that point and they knew that there was only so much time that they had left with her. And she died two days before her birthday. She passed on last Saturday and her birthday was this past Monday. And I found out that her husband, Alan, wrote her a poem talking about their love and talking about the love that they have felt for each other their whole lives and the joy it's brought him and how grateful he is to have a love like that. And he wrote her this poem for her birthday on Monday, but she didn't make it to Monday. So uh, again, if you knew anyone with cancer or saw anyone with cancer, you just know that their time is coming just being around them. And so he knew that her time was coming. And on the Saturday that she passed, he gave her her birthday poem early. So he gave her this poem and she got to read it. She read it in private and she got to sit with it. And then hours later is when she passed. So in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, like she knew she was going to die He knew he was going to die, but he loved her so much and wrote this poem for her. I'm tearing up. It's fine. And gave it to her on the day that she knew and they all knew that she was going to die. And the last words that were in her mind were her husband's words telling her how much he loved her their whole lives. Oh my goodness. Like how sweet is that? Are you clutching at your heart? Because I am. And then she died. Like having his words in her mind. How sweet is that? I mean, it's not sweet. She died. Sorry. Wrong choice of words. (laughs) Jesus. But you know what I mean? It's just, you know, it was her time. She knew that. And the fact that she got that gift from him is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. The boy needs to step up his romantic game. He doesn't He doesn't write me little love letters and notes and stuff like that. He does like on fucking Valentine's Day, which is sweet. And he does put some time into that. And I've I've kept his stuff. But like, baby, write me a fucking poem. Thank you. Okay. And that concludes News with Nina. Sorry, I'll stop that. Um, Anyway, wanted to thank you so much for tuning in. Season three, episode one of the Nina Blanco podcast. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much if you were listening to Dubs and I on Yeti. Uh, We put out a couple episodes the last couple of months. And if you want to catch up on those, Yeti is also available everywhere on Spotify. We put it up on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, etc., etc. So go check out Yiddy if you haven't already. And thank you so much for listening to season three, episode one of the Nina Blanco podcast. I'll be back with new episodes every Friday for breakfast burrito Friday. Love you so much. Thank you. Bye.